This session will be an introduction to event capture within DHIS2. We will start by describing the event capture interface. We will then show you how to register a new event within the application. When we're entering data belonging to a particular event, we will demonstrate the use of program rules to hide different variables during data entry, program indicators to calculate values while you are entering data, and program validation rules which check the data that you are entering and prompt the user in the event values are entered incorrectly. We will also demonstrate the use of offline data entry, which will allow you to enter event program data without an internet connection. We will then review everything we've gone over in this particular session. Let's go ahead and get started. In this session, we're going to cover how to use event capture. Event Capture allows us to enter event program data into DHIS2. In order to access the Event Capture application, I'll go to Apps and I'll select the Event Capture application. The interface in Event Capture is similar to that of numerical data entry. We can see that the organization unit hierarchy is on the very left hand side, while the majority of the window is taken up by the actual data entry interface. Let's select an organization unit in order to enter data. After selecting our organization unit, we will select the program. Let's first look at this malaria case management program. Before we proceed, let's describe the event capture interface so we're familiar with all the different options that are available. We can register a new event by clicking on this green icon. We can also print the list of events that are available on this page that belong to this particular organization unit. If I click on print list, we can have a preview of what this list will look like. We can also download this list in various formats by clicking on the download button. This might be a bit more useful, depending on how we want to take this data offline. At the top, we see individual columns with some notations on the data. We can add in these columns. These columns actually represent data elements that are part of this malaria case management program. We can see that each line represents one case of malaria. If I click on the Show and Hide Columns button, I can see the different data elements belonging to this program. Let's just select an additional item to show on this front page. We can see the confirmation method has now appeared on this front page of the event capture application. Right now we see quite a bit of events on this front page. We can actually filter these out. For example, for condition of patient, I see we have severe and simple cases of malaria. Let's filter this so we only see the simple cases. We can combine this filter with other filters in the column. If I click on the magnifying glass beside gender, I can also filter the female cases. Now we only see those cases that are simple malaria and are female cases. At any time, we can clear our filters by simply removing them. We click on the magnifying glass and remove what we've typed in as our filter. If I click on one of these cases, it gives us a couple different options. We can edit the event. This will actually open up the event and allow us to edit all of the different data elements belonging to this particular event. We can edit in the grid and we can look at the audit history. Let's edit in grid first. This allows me to change the values of the data elements directly from this front page. We can close this data entry by clicking on the X up top.
Let's switch to the SARA program. This is the survey that we mentioned earlier in our discussions. In this particular program, let's click on one of the objects again. We had other options. We could also search the audit history. The audit history allows us to review if any changes have been made to the data elements in this particular program. We can see a number of these values have been changed from a previous value to a new value. 